Hey Chiefs Kingdom, Harrison Graham here. I want you to like this video if you think the Chiefs will repeat as Super Bowl champions. I'm confident. I hope you guys are too. I want to set a record here on the Chiefs Report. Our highest liked video is 250 likes. We're shooting for 300. I think we're going to blow that out of the water because we all think the Chiefs are going to repeat as Super Bowl champs. So go ahead and like this video and let's get today's episode underway. Let's start with the latest Chiefs rumors. Dre Kirkpatrick has been released by the Cincinnati Bengals, and I think the Chiefs might show some interest. As you guys know, Kansas City still in desperate need of some cornerback help after losing Kendall Fuller. Rashad Breeland is still a free agent. Not a ton of momentum on that side of things. Now, as far as Kirkpatrick goes, only played in six games this past season. The Bengals did release him. They signed him to that five-year, $52 million deal a couple of years back. They decided to release him, save some money. Um, look, he's still a starting caliber cornerback, which is what the Chiefs need right now. Traverius Ward is really the only corner on the roster who has starting level experience consistently. Uh, the past four seasons, Kirkpatrick been pretty solid. Hadn't had a pick the last couple of years, but remember, he only played in six games in 2019. Probably not going to have any three or four interception seasons anymore, but uh, I think he can still be a solid starting caliber corner, which, like I said, is something Kansas City is in desperate need of because when you look at this secondary, yeah, you're feeling good about Traverius Ward. The safety position's in really good shape with Tyre Matthew and Juan Thornhill. Uh, I would be okay with Rashad Fenton as the nickelback. I thought he showed me a lot last year as a rookie, but if Breland doesn't come back, is he still a free agent there? You really need to fill that need because Antonio Hamilton, Keith Reeser's a free agent, um, Mo Claiborne, I don't think Hamilton's going to be a starter. So you got to fill that void on the outside, and I don't see why there's any reason why Drake or Patrick can't be that guy. Veteran corner, still only 30 years old, though. I think he's got a lot left in the tank. And when the Bengals' defenses and those teams were good and in the playoffs, he was a big reason why. It brings attitude to the position, something the Chiefs could certainly benefit from. So, what do you guys think? Should the Chiefs sign cornerback Dre Kirkpatrick type Y for yes, type in for no? I'm certainly on board. The price has to be right. I'm not saying I'll give him $10 million, but one year, $6 million? Who says no? Obviously, the Chiefs will have to uh, maneuver their roster a little bit as they don't have much cap space at the moment. But I think this would be a good signing. I'll make this the pinned comment. Let's go ahead and scroll on down. Should the Chiefs sign Drake or Patrick? Let's look at the top free agent cornerbacks. And Kirkpatrick's on there as well. I've ordered this based on age. Logan Ryan, more of a nickelback. I wouldn't hate this idea. He becomes your Kendall Fuller replacement. If you want to go that route, I think he'll be too expensive for the Chiefs, though. Tremaine Johnson, Prince of Mucamara, some veteran corners that keep to leave, getting a little bit older, but he could provide some veteran experience as well. So there's still guys the Chiefs can go and sign. Obviously, Bashad Breeland's another one who I think that would make the most sense and be the easiest option, but these are some other options out there as well. The current quarterback depth chart, it's thin, guys. These are the only four options, and only two of them I'm super comfortable with. Traverius Ward, Rashad Fenton, Antonio Hamilton, more of a special teams guru. He, he will help in that regard, but he's not a starting corner. And Fenton's probably more of a nickelback, so you don't want him playing on the outside permanently. And then Alex Brown, we don't really know that much about Alex Brown. So this cornerback group needs some depth, needs some higher level players at that position. So I ask you this question. How should the Chiefs address their need at cornerback? Type B for draft, type S for sign, obviously in today's Show. We're talking about the idea of signing Drake or Patrick. Um, I don't really care. I just think they have to address it one way or the other. You cannot enter next season with what you currently have at the cornerback position. What you can do is purchase a sick draft hat. Every 30, every NFL team, all 32 of them, has released their draft hat specials. They're out different styles. You can get the flat bill, the snapback, the baseball cap style. There's even more than than this chatsports.com slash chiefs draft that is the link to purchase these hats today got a flash sale going on right now check that link it'll be in the comments it'll be in the description you click on it boom it gets you to the page where you can purchase these sweet draft hats i love the theme this year i think it's a good look not a lot of positive things going on but the nfl draft is still on schedule and hats have been released so go ahead and purchase one today
Next rumor here, let's talk about Sammy Watkins. It's another Chiefs rumor show, some more Sammy Watkins rumors. What are the Chiefs going to do with them? Well, rumors been flying around that the Eagles have some interest in a trade. Obviously, they would be uh, bringing on a big contract to Sammy Watkins. It's due $21 million next season. Now, the Chiefs would eat seven of that because that's his dead cap hit number, so it wouldn't be as bad for Philadelphia, but if you're Kansas City, if you trade him or if you cut him, you save 14 million and that still remains, you know, uh, it just me, I just think that makes the most sense. Like that remains the most likely scenario. I can't imagine he's gonna play for 21 million for Kansas City in 2020. I found this interesting. Uh, the text is a little small, but an Eagles fan post on Instagram posted this basically saying, you know, Sammy Watkins rumored to be interested, uh, you know, going to Philadelphia. And he responded, uh, you know, with some emojis there, some positive ones, some celebrate celebratory emojis there, Sammy Watkins did. What does that mean? Who really knows? Obviously, uh, you know, NFL athletes, professional athletes do stuff on social media all the time. I think he wants to remain in Kansas City, but I think he's also realistic and understands if he does, it's going to have to be at a lesser price tag. So we got three options. What do you think the Chiefs should do with Sammy Watkins? Really simple. Number one, keep him. If you keep him, you got to restructure him. That's the bottom line. So keep that in mind. Number two, trade him. I think this is the best option. If the team's willing to trade for Watkins, you do it because you thought you might have to cut him. If you get something for him, that's a good option. Number three is ultimately cutting him. I still think that's the most likely scenario for Kansas City, but Brett Veach is taking a patient approach here. I thought this would have been handled a while ago, but uh, he is still on the roster. He is still set to make $21 million this upcoming season, so we will see what happens in the upcoming days and weeks. I like Sammy Watkins. I've said that time and time again. You just can't pay a number two receiver this much money. Like, it, it, you just can't do it. That production does not equal $21 million. That's the bottom line. Supply and demand, he doesn't reach it. You know, a lot of that production was in week one when he had almost 200 yards. He was awesome in the playoffs. I'll always love him for his catch over Richard Sherman in the Super Bowl. That led to Kansas City winning a Super Bowl. I appreciate the guy. We'll see it in 10 years at the uh, 10 year reunion, but you can't make $21 million at that position when you already have a loaded wide receiver court. Tyree Kill, McCall Hardman set for a bigger role next season. Demarcus Robinson re signed on a one year deal. I saw a lot from Byron Pringle on his limited reps last year. You can draft a receiver for a lot cheaper. The Chiefs have plenty of options here. Paying Sammy Watkins $21 million should not be one of them. Like That just does not make sense when you can cut or trade him to save $14 million. So I put a quick trade package together, and it's, it's really simple. This is it uh, with the Eagles. Uh, they get Sammy Watkins. Chiefs get their sixth-round pick, uh, number 190 overall. A lot of you are probably saying, oh, why would you give him up for a sixth-round pick? Guys, we were ready to cut this guy. So if you get something for him, that is better than nothing. So who wins this trade? Type C for Chiefs, type E for Eagles. I think it could be a win-win. The Eagles receiving core is very bad right now. If they only give up a sixth-round pick for Sammy Watkins, yeah, they'll overpay for this year. They can work on an extension with him and keep him long term. I could see that happening for Philadelphia as well. So type C for Chiefs, type E for Eagles. I want you guys to go ahead and get subscribed to the Chiefs report. We're approaching 3,000 subs, almost at 2,500. Let's keep this thing rolling. YouTube.com slash Chiefs TV. Go ahead, hit that big red subscribe button. If you're watching on our main Chat Sports YouTube channel, you could have watched this video a day earlier on our Chiefs only YouTube channel. The link's down below. YouTube.com slash Chiefs TV. Once you get over there, go ahead and hit the red subscribe button. All right, before we get into Todd McShay's latest mock draft, I want to break down his two Chiefs selections. I want to look at the Chiefs' biggest needs as of now. Cornerback, just talked about that a lot. Drake or Patrick could be an option. Linebacker, interior offensive line, wide receiver, and running back. I think those are your top five needs as of now. And then these are your draft picks, only five of them. You got one pick in each of the first five rounds. Number 32, number 63, number 96, 138, and number 177. No six-round pick. No seventh round picks. That's kind of where the Chiefs sit in terms of draft capital at the moment. Now, ESPN's Todd McShay did release his latest two round mock draft, and he went running back in round one. DeAndre Swift, the player out of Georgia, very productive player, explosive. He can run, he can catch. You guys know me. 
I, I just don't think I would go running back in round one. I don't think it's a major need with this offense. Is DeAndre Swift better than Damian Williams? Yes. But Williams is more than serviceable. He's shown up big the last two playoff runs. I just think you could go in a different direction here. Now, do I hate the pick? No, I don't I don't hate the pick because Swift is a top 20 prospect in this year's draft. McShay has him as his number 13 player on his big board. So he's really good. He's probably the best running back in this year's crop, although there is a lot of them. So you could get other players in round two or three. But, you know, the production's there. He catches the ball well. He's a three down back. He could do a lot in this offense and would probably help out the running game a little bit. But is it enough to justify uh, drafting him? I'm not sure. It, it's intriguing. I will give you that. If you're playing Madden, you're fired up as hell. If you have DeAndre Swift on this offense, but it already has. But this isn't Madden. Go get a defensive piece. Uh, quite frankly, if you cut Sammy Watkins, go get a receiver, get an offensive lineman. I just think there's bigger needs than a running back. So all in all, I think if I had to grade this pick, C plus, B minus, again, it, it, it's not bad value. I think if you're going to take a running back, in round one, DeAndre Swift is the guy to do it with. I just think for the Chiefs specifically, it's not a big enough need, which is why I can't give it higher than a C plus or a B minus. But grade the pick, A, B, C, D, or F. Go ahead and let me know down in the comment section. All right, I've been practicing this name all day. Uh, Noah Igbenogany. Yes, I think I got it right there. I'm just going to call him a Noah I. I like this pick a lot better. The defensive back, the cornerback out of Auburn. He likes to press. Now, keep this in mind. He's a converted wide receiver, so he's still developing. He's still learning the position. Really good athlete, good tackler. Special teams value as well. Return kicks and punts uh, at Auburn, so I think he could uh, offer some of that as well. Obviously, you have McCall Harmon and Tyreek Hill who do some of those things, but he is a versatile player who can do some things on special teams. I think he can be a gunner for you as well. So he's kind of a guy that can do a lot of different things if you were to get him. If you get him late in the second round, like Todd McShay did here, I think it's good value. Now his ball skills, eh, still developing. No picks last year, only seven pass breakups, but he's got the physical tools to continue to translate to the position. Uh, it just may take a year or two for him to fully uh, translate to being a legitimate outside corner at the NFL level. I do wonder if he could play some nickel. Uh, I don't know if he has that much versatility yet, but I do like his athleticism. I think Noah I could be a potential option for the Chiefs in round two. But pick a cornerback. We've talked about Breland a lot. I still want to bring him back. If you have to choose between these two, type B for Breland, type I for Noah Igbenogany. I've got it right twice now, guys. I'm on a roll today. Type B for Breland, type I for Noah I. I'm still going Breland. I know what I have there. Known commodity, proven player, came up big in the Super Bowl. I would much rather roll with Shad Breland, but obviously drafting Igbenogany would be a cheaper option for the Kansas City Chiefs. And this is kind of what that uh, depth chart would look like uh, Breland, I slid him down because he's still a free agent. Like you plug in Noah I as your second corner on the outside opposite of Charvarius Ward. I don't know if he's ready to come in and start right away, but Chiefs are thin at corner. So if they take a corner around one or round two, they will likely be starting on this defense.